What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of E-Electric Productions. I'm Jay and today I'm bringing you Megaton Rainfall. Megaton Rainfall is an odd title. It's a little bit different than I think most people are expecting and because of that I think it's going to see some pretty heavy backlash on the Steam Store. I hope not, but I think that it will. Already there's been some misconceptions that this is a VR title. Right now it is not a VR title. It may look it from the screenshots and people are definitely assuming that it's a VR title but it's not. Not yet, at least. I'm not sure if the dev's going to take it that direction or add support later on, uh, but for right now, again, if that's a make-or-break deal for you, just no going in, no VR. What is the game? In a nutshell, <laughs> you play an ethereal Superman uh, in a art house style game with arcade combat. <laughs> if that sounds just like I just kind of vomited up video game exposition all over the place, yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Um, I still don't know what I think of the game yet. It's not a bad game. There was a lot of thought and care that went into making this, and whether you like it or not is probably not going to be based off of whether or not you think it's well made or not, but more whether or not it plays to a style that you like or don't like. I'm concerned a lot of people are going to go in right away thinking that this is just a Superman clone, and while you definitely feel sort of like an ethereal Kal-El, this isn't really a Superman clone exactly. I mean, at least it's not Superman 64, right? I mean, eh, eh? But, uh, so, in a nutshell, you get... I'm going to warn you now, the tutorial is so boring and I'm tired of the exposition in this game. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of vague, just, I'm your father, follow me, you chase them all over the place, here you go, here's a cube, here's some aliens, you don't know anything about them, you don't know anything about yourself. I know the game's going to, it drip feeds you information, and I'm sure it's all going to come to some surprising climax, but... Uh, it is very dull and very boring in the beginning. Just be warned, the tutorial is rough to get through, and I am so tired of this father figure uh, calling me, hey, come follow me, let me tell you something else. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it's it's it gets grating on me a little bit. Um, once you get through the first couple of missions, you're turned loose a lot more so. You'll get a couple of upgrades. Um, I've got this really powerful beam. Uh, that I can charge up and unleash that does a lot of damage. I can also hold in both my left and right trigger at the same time and again do a heat ray wave thing that does massive amounts of damage. Um, what else do I currently have? I can, oh, I can also go super duper fast if I want to. So that's the earth there and this is the moon. Uh, let's see, where's the sun? There's the sun. Let's go to the sun. As you leave a planet's surface, you will begin to speed up very, very quickly. That's an upgrade that you get. And then as you get closer, you slow down. You can use your left bumper and right bumper to basically just go up or down as well to aid you. <clears throat> so we are on the surface of the sun, which as you know is a gaseous kind of liquid plasma. So we are messing around on the surface of the sun right now and I can fly pretty fast and we can race along the gaseous surface of the sun. Then we can leave. And here's what's really cool. You can explore the entire universe. Are you going to find anything? Probably not. I don't know. I, I don't know. But uh, let's see, for example, okay, there's a solar system out there. So let's start flying in that direction. They want me to go back to Earth, and we're going to in a moment. But first, we're going to fly towards that solar system that is in the middle of my screen. We are going to pick up incredible speed. Your character can fly um, one trillion light years an hour, I believe, is the figure that they give. So here we go. We're racing towards this galaxy here and uh, as you get closer it will slow you down a little bit and you'll begin to make out little systems so let's fly towards that little cluster right there is that the traveler just kidding um, and then as you continue to race along um, you'll begin to make out individual planets 
and stars. So here we go. We're entering in and they begin to populate. And let's just pick uh, let's pick this like looks like a little red dwarf or something. I don't know, but it's something small. Comparatively small. It's like a little uh That's pretty cool. So it looks like it's also a little little star. And we can go down to the surface. Now, I mean, you know, this is just a molten ball, so there's not much to see. But there are some other planets out here. I found a couple as I've been flying around, um, some of which sustain um, like water, things like that. So they still want us to go back to Earth, and, you know, we're, we're going to do that. Uh, but uh, for just the sake of checking out one more here. Now let's go to this one over here. And it's a little weird. You'll you'll get used to the system. It's it's a little different. Uh, getting closer, closer, closer. So again, not much to see on this one. We'll go down, and it's like blue plasma. Still pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and your character will get turned upside down sometimes relatively speaking this one here doesn't look like it's just a ball of molten something so it almost looks like Jupiter a little bit a lot of it let's see if we can enter the atmosphere here we go entering the atmosphere going on. So this this one does have an atmosphere. It's like a desert planet. And some are more detailed than others. Now, with a game this size, obviously, graphically, it's not the most intense thing in the world. But, even with that being said, so we're going to head now back the direction they want us to go. So I'm leaving the atmosphere of this planet. And we're going to go rocketing off towards, back into our solar system. And you will see we will start picking up speed, and then it will lock on to that solar system. And we will go zipping along towards it. Now, did the devs decide to put some other stuff into this game? Like, is there other planets that have aliens in it? I don't know. I mean, there's clearly us. There's an alien race that's trying to attack Earth. And, uh, you know, and then there's there's humans. So, there's something out there. Um, is there more than that? I don't know. Here we go. We keep making our way in. Give it a chance here to kind of load in. And because of your speed, you can zip past things <clears throat> excuse me, very quickly. So you kind of also have to be careful because you can think, oh, I'm headed towards a planet, and then you can overshoot it, and it seems like it just disappeared, but in all actuality, you're moving so quickly that you just zipped right past it. So let's pick up some speed here. And you just build momentum. There's our sun. You're starting to get in a feel for just how small <laughs> we actually are. So all that's pretty cool. And we're going to continue to make our way back towards Earth. Coming in quick. We're going to go to Mission 3. That's what the M3 stands for. Looks like it's... And all of a sudden, you can see that there is actually... Yes, and there's aliens and they're coming. Before we even engage the aliens, though, I'm going to show you something. 
Now, I'm not saying the graphics are really good or anything, because they're not. I mean, but you have to understand, like, you're dealing with scale here so huge. But you can get down almost right onto the street level. And you can also wreak mass amounts of havoc. However, if you do, your casualty meter starts to uh, go up, and that is not good at all. So you do not want to do that. You do not want to recreate the ending scene of the latest Superman movie, um, you know, uh, where the one that uh, pissed off Bruce Wayne so much when he's, like, flying around fighting and uh, wiping out the city. Because very quickly here, you'll see... Let's see, let's head over here. I mean, it just vaporizes everything. So, you can also zip through the cities pretty quickly and you will auto fly, meaning your character will maneuver in between the buildings very fast. And another thing that's really cool is you can, let's kind of go up into the atmosphere here. I know we're avoiding the mission right now, uh, but I actually find the missions to be the dullest part of the game comparatively. Uh, we're we're going to fail that mission. Well, let's see if I can make it into the water before I restart. Nope, can't. You can actually go into the ocean, and when you go into the ocean, there's there's fish and everything else swimming around in there. Did not mean to fire. All right, so they want us to do the mission, so let's do a mission. Here we go. Flew a little fast there. Hello, aliens. And this actually makes out one of the more frustrating parts of the game. And that is, you are going to constantly, accidentally destroy uh, the human populace. You're not going to mean to. You just are. So then you end up feeling like a jerk. Because you're sitting there trying to save them. But you're going to end up doing just as much, if not sometimes more damage, than the aliens themselves. Get it? Almost. The key to this and all of the aliens is the red dots that you will see on them. The red dots are their weak points. If you hit those weak points, you will destroy them. So now we're following this alien craft. Racing through the clouds. And to another cityscape. And I used my heat ray there. Zip through. There you are. I hate these guys. They've got a weak spot on one end, which is easy. And then a weak spot on the other end, which is tougher to get to. One of the best tactics in this game is to try and get underneath of the spacecraft, the alien spacecraft. Because if you can get underneath of them, I mean, look, like, we just took out that alien, but then in so doing, we took out <laughs> this floating building. So you're starting to get an idea for what this game offers. So, I mean, this is a very arcade style, and this is what I mean. It's kind of like Superman, but at the same time, kind of not. Got the glowing hands there. I would have actually preferred to have solid hands. 
to the glowing hands, and I think that's what made other people also think, oh, it's a VR title. Because uh, the glowing hands are kind of more typical in those VR games. These guys, I just can't stand these guys. They're quick, they're small, they do a ton of damage to buildings. Your weapon, your main weapon, does have a slight, um... I don't know, heat seeking, motion tracking, oh good, I got the front end of it first. And then there's usually the big, big baddie that comes along. Okay, I got one end of it. Where's the other end? There you are. Oh, I don't have my heat ray. There we go. We got another one. And honestly, this part of the game for me is is kind of the most so I just try to take that guy out and end up just wrecking so much of this poor planet or this city sorry whoa there we go that wasn't a bad shot and then, once you complete these missions, these Xenospheres, uh, or Xenocubes, or whatever they call them in this game, uh, one of those will open up and give you a new ability, a new power, which progresses the game in some way. Or just powers you up. So here we go, let's fly into it. There we go, so it is Xenosphere. 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 And rank C. Probably would have gotten a B if I had not used my heat ray and cut through an entire, like, bunch of buildings. And then exposition. And I can't stand these parts. I don't know. It just, it's just jarring. It's like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm getting into my own thing. You know, I'm, I'm starting to progress. And then all of a sudden, it's like, nope, now you're coming with me. So I got to fly out here and go wherever he wants me to go before I can progress any further. Is it a huge deal? No. But it's... This is a weird title because for me, the weakest elements of this title are the combat and all of this story portion. I like the world, the exploration. And there we go. And we get the next power. There's definitely some very... Um, new ability, Paralyze, stops uh, stops the time. Press Y to use, takes a while to recharge. Your new ability will give you more time to destroy all the intruders. Use it when they are numerous, or when they are about to harm the humans. There we go. Protect the 
And there we go. Exposition complete. Um, there are some heavy spiritual overtones um, in this game as well. So if you're somebody who's easily triggered um, either way by spiritual things, I <laughs> you might want to steer clear of this title just because it's it seems pretty ham-fisted and it's like at every turn. At first, you know, it's, you think, oh, I'm going to be Superman. But really, it seems more like the voice is God and you are God's hand in some way. I might be wrong, but that's what kind of keeps getting pushed through all of the dialogue and the exposition. So, yeah, if that's something that's going to bother you, just know also going in. Uh, I'll go down here into the ocean so you can see what I'm talking about with fish and stuff. So you can dive down into the ocean. And then as you hang out a little bit, you'll start to see, look at that, Finding Nemo. So guys, that's the game. I mean, this is a tough game to review because I think it's just going to be so polarizing. There's a lot to this game. There's a lot of different parts to this game. You've got exploration, you've got story, you've got the arcade combat. It has a very unique soundtrack to it. Um, it's, it's a really, you know, there's people that are going to be turned off by the fact they want to be Superman, but they can't be because it, it sort of really pushes you down certain paths in this game. There's people that are going to be upset that there's not VR when it looks like there should be. There's people that are going to be upset by the religious overtones, undertones, whatever. Um, there's people that are going to not like the combat, but they're going to like the exploration or vice versa. It's, it's a weird title. I don't think this person was just trying to throw everything at the wall and see what stuck. I really don't. But I do think that they had a lot of vision and they really try to put it all into this game. And it's just a very unique title. If this looks interesting to you, then I'd say that it's worth the price of admission. Just know what you're getting into if you're going to buy it. Don't think it's some Superman beat em up, you know, Marvel superhero movie. It's not. Uh, don't think it is just a straight up exploration game because you're going to keep getting pulled back into the missions. It's a tough one to sell. It's a tough one to recommend. Not because it's a bad game, but just because it's such an odd bird. So uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this review. If it looks good to you, by all means, go ahead and support the devs. And if it looks like, if you even think, I'm not sure about this one, I'd recommend holding off and waiting for a sale to pick it up. Uh, just because it's... Well, you've seen it. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I hope this video helped you in some way. Sorry if I came down like hard on the game or if it seemed like I was coming down hard on the game. There's just there's a lot to like. And for me, there's a lot that I dislike too. So it is, it is sort of a mixed bag. But I would say it's a good game um, in that it was developed well. It's got some great concepts and, and whatnot. I look forward to seeing all of you guys on the next episode of E-Electric Productions. And until then, game on, my friends. Bye-bye.